Right, hello everyone, and welcome to Way of the Laser, episode 2, 1, 2, yeah, alright, so first off, I uh, just want to show you, since we last talked, I actually hit number 8 on the leaderboard right there with pulse lasers, uh, that means I'm top 10 in two categories, one being shot works, the other one being pulse lasers. So that being said, let's just dive right in here. Uh, real quick shout out to Sleech100 from the uh, Vive subreddit. Uh, he actually was able to follow my directions from Way the Laser uh, episode one, and he said that he was able to get his uh, score from about 60k where he was stuck at to about 100k. So good job to Sleech on that one there. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna talk about uh, um, my favorite gun here, our Shotworks gun. We have, very simply here, a gun that um, is capable of shooting incoming lasers. So if some of you guys have wondered how you can get such a good score, I'm gonna try to demonstrate this here for you real quick. Um, what we've got is incoming lasers right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and shoot them. See, there we go. You can actually shoot the lasers as they're coming in, of course you have to be quick and kind of be able to get that angle, but if you get the angle that they're shooting you at, your guns will naturally be lined up with the incoming shots. So you will take out the shots while trying to shoot through their lasers and hitting them on the back side of that. So let's see if we can show that off right here. See, took out both the laser shots he was sending in my way and was able to kill him all the way through. It just kind of travels on through the shot into the bad robot there. So. We have lasers that uh, can be completely knocked out by these shotguns. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, something about, about the shields in this. Um, let's take out our shield here. That's another shield. There we go. Um, with the shield here, you actually don't have uh, as easy a way to access it, depending on where your head is turned. And I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'm gonna probably let one of these guys kill me real quick here. Let's see. Boom. 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 Right. So, let me show you what this looks like here. Um, pulling out this shield, and I got a gun in this hand. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch my arms out to the side of me, so I now have my guns directly left and right of me. So, what's gonna happen here is, when I turn my head, as long as this gun is somewhat close to my body here, as you can see in the image right here. If this gun is anywhere near your head or body when you turn it, the system will think, or the game will think, that you are pulling out your shield, because it doesn't know that you have a back. It has no idea that you have a body. Uh, it only knows where the back side of your headset is. It only knows that your the back of your head is here, and the front of your head is here, assuming this is your VR helmet here. Um, so it doesn't actually have a way to tell that you're actually uh, using your back. So the human body obviously can turn this way. I'm turning my body to the right. Obviously my head didn't move. I'm turning my body to the left. Obviously my head didn't move. It has no idea that my back moved to be on the right side of me now or on the left side of me now. So what happens is if you're kind of uh, in an intense situation and you're keeping these close or you're kind of uh, dropping your arm to your side back here, the game isn't going to know that you didn't want to just pull out your shield. So if you've ever had a, a moment where you can't pull out your shield, it's because you're not putting the gun behind your head. You need to make sure you put that gun behind wherever your head is. So if your head is facing right, it is no longer your back that is actually going to activate. It's going to be the back side of that helmet that's going to activate it. So let's see if we, if we can just uh, show this off here. I'm going to look at, see, I have a gun there and a gun here, and I'm going to go ahead and move them right to here. And what will happen is, as I turn my head, these are going to activate, and ooh, let's see, there we go, and there we go. So what happens is, it, it sometimes happens, doesn't happen every time, but they can be a little finicky, um, especially when you're in the heat of, uh, of a battle here. Let's see if I can replicate it one more time. Uh, doing this way. Yep, all right, so if I just look, see, I'm just, I have gun, and then shield. Gun, shield. Gun, shield. All right, so that's just with me turning the back of my head. So what happens is, is if, if I had my guns in front of me here and I turn my back, all of a sudden I'll come back and now I've got double guns and I don't have a shield. So if you've ever been playing and all of a sudden your shield's gone, that's a big reason why. 
Um, so you got to make sure that you're always putting your guns to the back side of your head, wherever your head is relative to where you're looking. That can be kind of a pain. And like I said, most of the time, that's not an issue. But some people uh, kind of lose that sense of battle confidence um, whenever they try and grab for a shield and it's not there. Uh, because you need it right now. You didn't need it in five seconds. You needed it probably before you pulled it out, because by the time you're pulling this out, probably some bad things have happened. Um, so having mentioned something about confidence, I want to talk about play-space confidence here real quick. So uh, in in the game you have a purple line here denoting the play space border all around the edge here. Um, for me, I keep my uh, chaperone boundary floor line always on, um, so for me it's slightly outside of this ring here, just ever so slightly. Um, so the thing you want to make sure that you can do is you want to make sure that you can move around f freely in your play space without worrying about crashing into anything. Now, I know that I have a larger play space than most people do, so I am somewhat privileged in that way, but one of the most important things about my play space is I've completely cleared everything out. If I slam into anything, it's only my body that's going to hit a wall. It's the only thing I have to worry about. Um, I'm not going to run into any people. I'm not going to accidentally hit any screens if I'm swishing or swooping in or if I'm diving somewhere. The only thing that I can possibly hurt is myself. Uh, I'm not in any danger of hitting any computer monitors or TV screens or breaking a desk or knocking over a drink. Um, everything is way away from my area here. So what I want to make sure that you do is before you even get into this game, make it so that you don't ever have to think about what happens if you go past the edge of your play space. You need to be able to make your step left or your step right. Even if that's all you've got, just a step in each direction, you need to be able to take all of those steps without ever once having to worry about running into something thing because what you want to do is you don't want to be thinking about what's around you while you're shooting in the air like this you need to be able to know right where you are in your room as you move around and be able to confidently move in that space now again it may be restricted but the confidence in that space is going to allow you to just zone in and kill bad guys so that's the important part here so now let's get into some classic here i want to discuss real briefly some of the power-ups because power-up management is possibly the most important thing that you can do. So here we go, right off the bat I have a uh, machine gun here. I have three guys coming at me now. I don't really need a machine gun. The machine gun blast is going to last quite a bit of time. These guys are all one-shots mostly, so I don't really need to worry about taking them out with a power-up. This is just not a good wave to use that power-up on right now. Um, again, it's a very powerful power-up. Um, problem is, these guys can all shoot those power-ups. If a bullet coming from one of these guys it lands on a power-up, that power-up is going to activate. So sometimes it gets a little out of your control as to when you can, you can or can't use a power-up. But basically what you want to do is you want to try to manage these power-ups as you move through here. Um, in this case, obviously, another wave. It's very simple. There's not a lot of guys going on here. So we're just going to go ahead and knock this out. See, now we got a second one here. Um, I have seen people that pull out this weapon here. And what they'll do is they will actually um, lasso it uh, over. So you can actually pull this down to yourself if you're so inclined. Um, see, there we go. There's a great example. That guy just shot my blast here. So now, of course, now that I'm using it uh, because it was activated, uh, you know, without my want, um, I'm going to go ahead and just use up the last of it here. So you have to be able to kind of just roll with those punches as they come along. Uh, for me personally, I don't really like to use or keep the uh, power-ups in my space here because I have enough play space that I kind of will forget that they're in here. And because all the bullets are coming at me and coming into this play space here, as the bullets are flying, they're much more likely to actually hit the object that you have near you because, of course, they're shooting at you. So you want to make sure that uh, you and your power-ups are out of the way as much as possible. Um, but definitely, if there is ever a uh, poorly placed uh, object, you know, you can always pull it just like you can these guys by pulling out that uh, other shield form. So let's go back to the shield here, let's get ourselves prepped for this next part. Um, so while we're talking about uh, power-ups, I want to go ahead and talk about trigger pulls, because you cannot get the most out of your power-ups if you don't know how to pull the trigger on your HTC Vive controller right now. Probably many of you have put in a lot of hours in a various different games, you're like, oh, I know how to pull my trigger, right? I got this. Well, here's the thing. I've seen several people that actually do a full trigger pull, which means uh, in the current position that you can see the trigger at, that's where they always reset to. Now, unfortunately, the triggers in this game won't actually correspond with my actual trigger pull, so be, I'm depressing the trigger and it's not moving. But for the sake of the argument here, um, what you want to do is you want to basically 
keep the button held down at all times. Um, and what you're basically doing is you're, you're lightly letting go of that button. So you're mostly keeping it held down, and then um, whenever you need to, you're gonna kinda let it go slightly so that you can keep doing the shot. So what that means is that instead of going, that's about as fast as I can pull these triggers right here when I'm just tapping the uh, trigger buttons. However, when it actually comes down to doing the actual shooting, um, what I do is I pull the trigger all the way down and then just sort of like rapid fire or bump fire it. So as you can see, it's much faster here. And for my right hand, um, I'm not as dexterous as my pointer finger, so I actually put both my pointer finger and my middle finger right next to each other on the trigger there, and I can do this. Very quickly, I can I can kind of uh, rock back and forth between my pointer finger and my middle finger. And it allows me to get a few more shots off. So now, see, this is a great example of a wave here because um, that wave, wave 10, always has about 10 of those white guys, and they're a great way to use that green machine gun power up on because you can wipe them all out very, very, very quickly. Um, if you have a green power up and you're going into wave 10, do yourself a favor, try not to activate it, and go ahead and activate it once that's occurred. So, um, now that we've discussed the trigger buttons and how to properly pull the trigger so you can get the most rapid fire out of your fire rate, you can kill more guys if you pull the trigger faster, um, we're going to talk about the next power up here. Um, one of the things is that you can get the homing bullet uh, power up in this game. And that's for, I think it's a slightly yellow color. Um, let's see if we can get that to pop up here. So, the yellow colored homing bullets. Uh, power up is the weakest power up against bosses. Um, and if you have that activated before a boss fight, you're probably going to lose because um, it lasts a long time and it does very, very, very little damage. Um, and it's just, it's unfortunate because sometimes, like I said earlier, you just can't help the fact that a bad guy, just like that, activates a power up. Just nothing you can do about that. It's just inevitable. So, you're just gonna have to just kind of beat that power up. Um, but, if you're pulling the trigger quickly with the homing bullets, you can actually effectively take out an entire line of guys. So this is wave 16 here, again, another really good wave. It's mostly single shot uh, white robots, which are very easy and quick to kill. You can get a 10x combo there just by using, again, that green uh, machine gun power up. So, I'm just not getting lucky that we're with the homing bullets. And of course, I took a shot. So, um, you want to make sure that you don't use those homing bullets on the current uh, boss wave if you have one coming up. And if you can, try and activate that power up at the very start of the wave, uh, just before they kind of come up above this radar line right here. This is the guy zooming around you right here. If, if you guys haven't seen this radar before, this is a 360 radar radar of the whole play area here. There's the guy shooting at me. Um, so what you want to do is, once these guys are kind of coming up here, here you can see them all right there. They're coming up, they're shooting at you. This would be a great time to have the homing bullet, because you can just kind of generally shoot in the direction of the bad guys. And they'll mostly hit them, which is very, very, very nice. Um, even just for a little bit of damage, because it'll help keep that combo multiple going for you. Um, this is obviously the combos are where all the good scores are at there. So, uh, obviously we can't get the uh, homing bullet to work today, um, but the other thing to note is that when you get the rocket launchers, the rockets that come out of your ship over here and send out, make sure that you do not activate that power-up until all of the robots are about where they are as far as above the horizon line. Because what happens is, is that when the uh, power-up is activated, that machine, your ship, tries to start homing in on all the bad guys here. And if they're all below the horizon line, it will send your rockets directly into the ground right in front of you, right here, and it will not be killing anybody, and there won't be a whole lot of goodness for you there, especially as far as scores are concerned. Um, ah, just what I was talking about. Here we go. There's the rockets. See, they're coming down in an arc. 
Here's the other thing. Look at how little damage those rockets did. Don't use rockets on boxes. I mean, again, if you have to have it available, if it's there for you, you obviously can. But uh, that's a big recommendation there. Don't use rockets on bosses. Don't use homing bullets on bosses. Uh, make sure that you have all those things set up for yourself beforehand. And again, if you're going to activate a power-up, make sure that you do it once all the bad guys have already come up above this horizon line because you want those rockets, which are coming from the ship about back here behind you, they need to go up and over and be able to hit their targets. But those rockets, while they're heat-seeking and they will get the robots, they're not very quick, so it helps to assist the rockets in keeping your combination going to actually continue to kill guys even as those rockets are coming up over your head and destroying guys because otherwise you might lose that combination that you had going on there, uh, especially because the rockets can kind of explode and have a little bit of an AOE and they can take out more guys with them. I think that mostly covers everything else that I have here. So we talked about play-space confidence. We talked about the different power-ups. Don't use homing bullets on uh, boss power-ups. Don't use the rockets on the boss power-ups. Wait for the, all the bad guys to come up above the horizon line here. Um, and of course, talked about the shield issue, where if you have your gun back here somehow, or your arm drops to your side, and you turn your head, all of a sudden, that's going to go out of the way, and you're going to have not the right weapon that you want. Uh, I think that's about it. That about covers all the most recent things that I've noticed. Uh, if you have any other questions, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you got going on. Thank you very much for watching Way of the Laser Episode 2.